check this out. It's the ZV-E1 with a fan. Yeah. So we got to talk about the Sony ZV-E1. Now, I know this didn't get a lot of praise when it was released about a month ago now, and for good reason. It does have a few cons that potentially could outweigh these pros, but some of the cons were just really silly and really ridiculous and people just nitpicking, wanting pretty much absolutely every feature in here and paying only a thousand dollars for it. And that's it's not going to happen for a business standpoint. It's just not going to happen. The sensor out of this thing is the same as what's in the FX3 and the legendary A7S III. Like, it's an incredible sensor for low light situations. It's a very fast readout 12 megapixel sensor. The image quality on this thing is ridiculously good. 4K 60 full frame. Don't forget, 4K 60 full frame with fast readouts. But then also, it is going to get a firmware update for 4K 120. But one of the major cons was that overheating and if you did run this for a certain period of time literally just sitting there it can overheat and if you are vlogging in certain situations and you're doing really long takes it may overheat but you'd pretty much be a psycho if you were literally sitting in 30 degree rooms trying to vlog not a lot of people would be doing that they'll be sitting in a studio like this at 22 23 degrees celsius and it's comfortable and this thing will pretty much run forever but if there is a situation that you did actually want to sit this on a tripod and use it professionally you absolutely can but that overheating is an issue but this thing i really wasn't expecting this to perform how it performs so let's talk about it so if you haven't seen my initial video of the overheating, uh, I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can check that one out. But that was filmed in Australian summer as well. So the temperature outside was like, you know, 30 degrees. And when it came to inside, it was really hot unless I had air con and stuff. And I did test it in a whole bunch of different scenarios as well. You know, direct sunlight or just regular outdoors in my garage, in this room. So many different temperatures and different scenarios. And a lot of them did overheat a lot quicker than I was expecting. But uh, that's where I had to find this thing off AliExpress. It's a little fan that literally sits on the back of the camera, which is really interesting because this actually does change the amount of time that you can actually get out of your camera. And it is obviously a good thing. It does actually allow you to record a little bit longer. Now, when it came to uh, filming just the other day, we're in autumn now, so the external temperature isn't as hot. It's about 26 to 25 degrees Celsius during the day, but direct sunlight, what I saw on the thermometer, it actually come up at about 34 to 33 degrees Celsius. So direct sunlight is obviously still quite hot, and that's what's gonna be hitting the top of your camera as well. But without the fan in 4K 25 frames per second, I actually got about 22 minutes in all I codec. So this is all I codec, this isn't compressed codec, so this is trying to film at the best quality as you can out of this camera. But uh, I got about 30 minutes with the fan on. Once again, let it cool down again. And the temperature did rise, only about a degree. So it was about 34 degrees Celsius. But I still got exact, it was almost exactly the same. It was, in, it was 30 minutes and 20 seconds or something. They were both pretty much exactly the same when it came to 4K25. So I ended up getting about eight minutes more than what I did with the fan, which, wasn't really super impressive, but hey, in those situations, it still could make a difference. But you have to take into consideration that this is hard pressed against the back. So there isn't much cooling around the back that can actually escape from the fan sort of hitting the back. It's actually going to be escaping through the way the fan's actually pushing, which is kind of slowing the fan down. But if you could actually bring it a couple of millimeters away from the back of the camera, the air is actually going to obviously dissipate a lot better. The fan is going to work much harder and you will actually cool the camera down much better. But what I did notice as well is that when I touched the back of the camera, it was nice and cool. It was actually really good. It, it worked quite well, but it was the top of the camera and it was the front of the lens is what actually started heating up. So when it comes to heat dissipation, it can't dissipate that heat around this smaller body. Whereas the FX3 and the FX30 have obviously exhaust fans and obviously the heat can escape and they are bigger bodies as well. So even though this is a little bit of a fix and does give you longer record times, the heat still can't escape from the body. But what you could potentially do is 
obviously open the car door and open the battery door. So that's going to let a little bit of heat dissipate throughout the body. So this is the page right here. You can see they've got the type A+, they've got this type B+, which is the one that I actually got. And it has a 500 milliamp hour battery, which is built into this little frame. And it can do up to six hours on the slowest fan or four hours or three hours, depending on which fan setting you actually choose. But you can see the size here. So this fits the ZV-E1 just when it comes to 7.7 .7 centimeters long. That's from this edge all the way over to this edge. So you could actually get this slightly larger one, which gives you an eight hour runtime with a 600 milliamp hour battery, but it's got a couple of fans there and it is slightly smaller when it comes to edge and edge, but you could also get this one as well. That will still also fit. Then when it comes to this quad fan design, this one will also fit, but it has no battery and obviously is not rechargeable because it doesn't have a battery, but this is the one that I actually ended up going for, which is about 65 Australian dollars, which is roughly, I don't know, about 40 US dollars or something, maybe a little bit cheaper, uh, but that's the one that I went for. So I've got this on the back of the a7 IV now, and I've got the shotgun microphone on top of the a7 IV. Can you actually hear it? You probably can hear it when I actually do pauses, but when I'm talking, you probably can't notice anything, but... Uh, I can physically hear it. So if I can physically physically hear it, you guys could probably hear it as well. It's not an absolute game-changing fix, but hey, it's there, it's an option. But Tilter did the same with the Canon R5 when that was first released. They actually brought out a fan that you can pretty much screw onto the back. And I think Fujifilm also has a fan that you can screw onto the back of one of the Fujifilm cameras because of overheating. So it's not rare, but will Sony actually come out with something like that? Maybe, I mean, but this is the option that you can you know, use at the moment that's relatively cheap. And at the end of the day, these are the things that you don't really wanna be doing. And if you're trying to run this uh, in a professional scenario, and you want extremely long record times, these are the things that you're gonna to have to do. Otherwise, you should be using an FX30 or an FX3. These are the situations is why you would choose a professional uh, video camera over you know, a camera that's made for vloggers. Just remember that this camera is meant to be for vloggers. So they went for smaller size over the heat dissipation. And Smaller size obviously is a big thing when it comes to travel vloggers, when it comes to creators that want to have a small and light compact uh, form factor body and they want to you know, travel around with them and they don't want to lug around bigger cameras. And if they do want to lug around bigger cameras, that's where you have a bigger camera to use, the a7IV, a7R5, uh, FX3, a7S3, all those kind of cameras are still there for you to purchase. They are obviously a lot more expensive. And this is obviously a lot cheaper with a very uh, amazing performance with all its AI features and just the sensor that's in it. You're gonna get incredible looking image quality out of this camera. So anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up. The link will be in the description below if you do wanna check out this fan or the other fans that are, you know, at AliExpress. I don't have any affiliation links or anything, but uh, I just wanted to test this out for you guys to see if it actually worked and it does work. But you know, there are a few cons to doing something like this, but uh, the choice is yours. If you do want to take this and, you know, try it for yourself and you see if it actually helps in your workflow, by all means, go for it. But uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get it.